Crack Champions is a game where you start from being weak to annihilating everything in your path with a nuke in your hands. The steep power creep is why I enjoyed this game so much, particularly grinding all the in-game achievements. It all started when two noob crabs started their first run. After clearing our first island, we opened the rewards chest and we had to choose one from three perks available. We can also choose different rewards for the next islands, which can either boost the elemental capabilities of your weapon, increase the RNG in chest loot or increase your critical chance, you get the idea. After every 6 island cleared, we have access to the shop. We bought the best upgrades the shop had to offer as we had to face an elite enemy for our next island, which was a very aggressive fire crab. In fact, I invoked the ire of the mini boss and took a lot of damage. Since we were playing on normal difficulty, we were able to get away with it. Defeating the mini boss awarded us with an epic chest, which made me choose between increasing my damage by 150% or boost your chance to deal 3 times your crit damage. In hindsight, I should have picked the damage boost. Oh, I almost forgot that he drops a key, which can be used to unlock new abilities and weapons in the hub. Over time, I slightly improved my skills and managed to beat a mini boss without taking damage, earning myself my first achievements in 26 minutes of playtime. Oh, don't worry, the game gets harder as you progress, with an influx of enemy spawns and maps that restrict movement. Nevertheless, we pulled through and it was time for the final boss, which is just a rather large skull. Apart from him spamming those humongous fireballs and the large AoE blasts that act as area denial, he was nothing but a pushover as we demolished his health, and upon defeat he dropped 3 keys for each of us. Oh yeah, he also rewards us with a legendary chest which offers some of the best loot in the game. As we aren't looping, we decided to celebrate on Crab Island instead. Doing so unlocked the Crab Champion 1 and Dual Shotgun Master 1 trophies for me. Notice that my Dual Shotguns have reached silver rank, which will be very important in the future. I used the keys and the totem gave me a minigun. At first the gun is pretty decent, but halfway through the run I realized this gun lacks crowd control and most importantly damage. No! 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 It's over! It's over! It's, it's, it's over! It's oh over! It's God. over! It's actually over. <gasps> I rewrote the key totem and this time it gave me a crossbow. And I was blown away by how good this weapon is, both in the early game and end game. Just look how much damage I'm dishing out. Oh, I forgot that looping the game makes about more challenging encounters on the same maps. One of the challenges are that two bosses now spawn at the final islands. I think the devs forgot about the challenging part as the both of us melted both of the bosses HP bar and I even received no damage. We had to loop the run three times to see how busted the crossbow is and oh my, they did not disappoint. This might be how looking as the Aurora Borealis looks like. At that point I was doing so much DPS that I was able to deal 100k damage in a single shot. Soon enough we got tired of the power creep. After celebrating our victory I got the looper and crossbow master 1 trophies. You also notice I got the silver achievement but I will discuss that later on. After that we decided to turn up the difficulty up to nightmare. The increased spawns and damage of the mobs gave us a more challenging time even sending my friend to spectator mode. Fan Thankfully, I'm kind of sick with the sniper and secured the clutch. Oh, in this run, I had to buy less than 5 accessories to get the frugal achievement. After double teaming the bosses, we claimed our victory and earned the frugal sniper 1 and 2 and crab champion 2 achievements. I then tried out the marksman rifle and at first it didn't go so well. <laughs> I later tested this gun with a different better build and oh my does it shred. I lasted so long into the run that my max health has increased to 10,000. I later realized that level 160 would be my limit for I'm doing next to no damage to the boss's HP bar. After defeating the bosses as I have more than 1 million unspent crystals in my infantry, I got the millionaire achievement as well as the marksman rifle master 1 and 2 trophies. I then did another nightmare run with the minigun and suddenly realized that you can increase your account's rank by enabling difficulty modifiers in the run, which made the shop even more expensive. To make things worse, the same crystals needed for the expensive items are required to unlock perk slots. This makes crystal dividends and essential components in these challenge runs. Eventually, I pulled through and earned myself my second win in a row. To challenge myself further, I enabled more difficulty modifiers. At first, the horde is kind of manageable, but I could hardly scratch the health bar of a base 
sick skull enemy later on. Nevertheless, I pulled through with the boss fight and claimed my 5 total wins and 3 win streak. As this run had 5 modifiers active, I also got the challenger 1 trophy. As I'm used to the difficulty modifiers, I decided to enable all of them at once to pursue diamond rank, in which you have to reach island 64. With all the weapons in the game, as just covering every run would be really boring, I've decided to incorporate a tier list ranking of all the weapons based on how difficult it is to reach diamond rank. First up we have the orb launcher. It deals terrible damage early game, but then does medium DPS at the end game. With its innate fast firing speed, I exploited the advantage by going all in on speed chests, particularly the rapid fire perk, and it lasers the enemies no matter what they are. While fighting the final bosses, I was accidentally stuck in a corner, and the skull bosses won't let me out. New cheese tactic just dropped boys. I managed to escape and destroyed the final boss, and was able to get both challenger 2 and 3 trophies as well as my account's rank being promoted to gold. Let's not forget to mention the orb master 1 and 2 trophies. Overall, I didn't struggle much with the orb launcher. Next up, we have the dual pistols. Although it has a slower fire rate, this deadly pair can shred both mobs and bosses alike. Although the run with the dual pistols is 6 minutes slower than that of the orb launcher, I'll still say this weapon deserves B tier. Third on the list is the blade launcher. This weapon does really good DPS at the start, particularly when homing shot is active. This weapon is already a DPS machine with the correct setup. And if you happen to stumble upon the obliterating shot perk, oh, obliterating shot, give it to me, give it to me. This weapon will ascend from amazing to overpowered as I shredded three bosses in 10 seconds time. As looping won't pose much of a challenge, we bought a lot of perks in the shop and spamming the reroll totem until it broke, which was the easy way to get the Fando trophy. At this point, I bought 100 items and rerolled 50 times, which subsequently unlocked the big spender and roller achievements. Eventually, I needed only one mod slot for the maxed out trophy. And after spamming the reroll totem, I finally found the last remaining grenade mod. As I have all perk slots filled up as well as more than 5 greed perks, I was able to unlock the greedy and maxed out achievements in the boss encounter. I've acquired a total of 7 new achievements this run, which solidified blade launcher as the easiest weapon to diamond rank. Coming in hot at number 4 is the flamethrower. Although it is one of the fastest firing weapons, the damage is pretty terrible at the start. However, this weapon applies all of damage over time aka burning, which compensates the lack of DPS. If you stack the accessories listed on the screen here, it melts every single thing you touch. And after my account rank has been promoted to sapphire rank, I'll say this weapon deserves A tier. Next up will be the dual shotguns. Although I've acquired the speedrun 1 and 2 trophies using this weapon, unfortunately this weapon is terrible at crowd control, and I had to resort to corners to isolate 1v1s. After multiple failed attempts, I finally crafted a build which could rip off massive chunks of health from the boss. During that run, I have acquired 20 levels for one single perk and unlocking the playing with power trophy. However, before I could claim my victory, I flew way too close to the sun. And after my fifth attempt with the dual shotguns, I can confidently say this weapon only shines at late end game, and its overall performance is terrible. Going over to the marksman rifle, it is pretty well balanced. The bullet spreads similarly like a shotgun, decent fire rate and decent damage. There's even a scope but I never bothered using it. I primarily focused on hip firing damage bonus as well as firing speed to make the marksman rifle deal amazing DPS as well as excellent crowd control work, which is already significantly better than the dual shotguns. And after a sub 16 minutes run with the weapon, the marksman rifle deserves the A tier. Another amazing weapon would be the arcane wand. This weapon would be incomplete without the arc shot. With arc shot equipped, you might as well say goodbye to the hordes of mobs that wants to touch you all over the place. It's also amazing against bosses, truly this thing shreds. As the arcane wand run is 13 minutes faster than that of the marksman rifles, it's an easy S tier for me. Unlike the previous two weapons, the laser cannons are pretty terrible. Although it has the fastest fire rate of any weapon in the game, the DPS stings noticeably in the early game. Not to mention it's also trash in crowd control. Until the later half of the loop, did the laser cannons start to pick up their damage. Still, it won't change the fact that the laser cannons are hot garbage, and I had to work very hard for that emerald rank. What a piece of trash. But fear not, the auto rifle is even worse, with abysmally low damage. When suddenly, Iron Jesus blessed me with not just one, not just two, but three levels of damage seeker, which gave me a 4.5 damage modifier. And surprise surprise, the weapon now deals amazing damage 
damage and completely wipe out crowds of enemies. Without damage seeker, I can confidently say the run will have taken more than 1 hour and 30 minutes. Absolutely dog shit. I then used the rocket launcher and it's really good. Cause arc shot is being arc shot. The only downsides are the slow shooting and reload times. Other than those, it is an amazing DPS machine. It clears crowds like it's nothing and shows the bosses who's the real boss in town. This weapon makes diamond runs a walk in the park and that is S tier material. After that, I played with the burst pistol and it's surprisingly good. The DPS is what the auto rifle should have been. The crowd control capabilities of this weapon had me surprised too. As this weapon shoots short but rapid bursts of fire, you'd be inclined to use mace shot and dagger shot. The build even works on bosses as well. Just look at that amazing damage. Overall, the burst pistol is everything the auto rifle aspires to be and deserving of A tier. The minigun on one hand has terrible crowd control. On the other hand, it does solid damage against bosses, but still less than at least the B tier weapons. In my opinion, this weapon is just like the dual shotguns. It takes a while for them to build up their damage. If not for the fast shooting speed, this weapon would have been terrible. C tier. The Seagull is a beast. Fast shooting speed and very high damage, especially at the late game. The only downside to this is the crowd control, but you're dealing so much damage you won't even notice. With the correct build, you can make this bad boy shoot like an AK-47. This pistol has more DPS than the auto rifle. A fucking rifle. It's just criminal at this point. Overall, the Seagull is one of the few weapons I had a lot of fun playing with. The best of A tier. The sniper is also a heavy hitter, but unlike the Seagull, has a significantly worse firing speed. Another thing I don't like is the scope, which limits my field of view. Surprisingly, no scoping in this game is very accurate. And considering the broken OP builds, you don't even need to aim at all, just shoot around like a madman. And after throwing through 96 islands like it's a walk in the park, I would put the sniper at A tier. Moving on to the cluster launcher, it has amazing crowd control. Oh, did I forget to mention this weapon has amazing damage potential? It's essentially a long range auto shotgun. Overall, this A tier weapon has a much better performance than the marksman rifle and the sniper. The second last weapon to diamond rank was the crossbow. It has the same properties as the cluster launcher, but the crossbow has a faster shooting speed. It performs even better at late game, and just like the blade launcher, there is nothing to contain its raw potential. Thanks to the crossbow, was I able to survive the deep trenches and salvaged as many pickups as I could to eventually get the recycler achievement. The crossbow also helped me eliminate over 9,000 enemies in a single run. Easily an S tier weapon. Last but certainly not least is the auto shotgun. Very fast shooting speed and consistently high DPS. It hits hard in the early game and it hits even harder than the combined forces of your father's belt and your mother's sandals in late game. This weapon is so OP that I cleared 100 islands with just under 70 minutes. I was also able to get the gunslinger achievement, and most importantly, diamond rank. Overall, it's better than the crossbow. After the diamond rank grind is over, I moved on to the slice and dice trophy. It's pretty simple, just get yourself a pair of fire turrets. Until I reached island 22 and realized the turrets aren't shooting the enemies. The problem was that the turrets spawned way outside of the map. I thought the trophy would be impossible now, but then, for some reason, all the enemies despawned. The only challenge now is killing the boss with only 3 turrets. But Surprisingly, King Skull killed himself in an act of empathy. Why should I blame him? I wouldn't want to be cheesed to death by this way. I then shifted my sights to the Arcade Champion Trophy, and I learned the hard way that dual pistols aren't the best choice to get 300 score. I then tried the Cluster Launcher on my second attempt, and it was way too close for comfort. Yes! Second try, baby. Since the arcade minigame was so easy, I tried out the holdout one. But no, you have 1 HP, and you have to get to 50 max score in this minigame. Let me tell you, this game mode is hard. Are you shitting me? Oh, god damn it. What's, what's the king skull here? What the fuck is this bullshit? Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! What the fuck? As I was currently stuck in this fiasco, I asked the internet for help. And some guys suggested the rocket launchers. To make things more easier, I switched to easy mode. I straight up stole the tactic and it's working marvelously. But one must never find peace in his surroundings. It's free real estate. What the fuck? Behind! Okay. Woo! Oh my god, there's a lot of crabs. Oh my god. Daddy Chill, Trump. daddy. This crap has to go. This crap has to go. Ah! Are you shitting me? Okay. Ah! What? 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 
At one point, I was inches away from the achievement, but me being me, I always sell. Are you fucking kidding me? Three hours later. Okay, fair enough. At that point, only three achievements remain. So I chose the easiest one, which is the solid gold achievement. After buying my 20th gold mod, I got the achievements by simply progressing through the next island. And what's left were two annoying hitless trophies. I made excellent progress towards the flex free trophy. Unfortunately, during the boss fight, I got hit by the elite lightning crab, which prompted a reset. I realized I had all the difficulty modifiers turned on, so I switched them off. And the run became so much easier, especially when there are no elite lightning crabs. And after a long while, of looping around the attacks. The elite fire skull is definitely not built for gatekeeping the second last trophy. And finally, I have to do a hitless run on normal difficulty. As I've completed so many true nightmare runs, I was basically skedaddling all over the enemies, and no hit the first biome 6 minutes in. But I got confidence of my abilities and costed me 2 resets in biome 2. Those are minor inconveniences as I completed biome 2, biome 3, and biome 4 without getting hit. When I celebrated victory, I got what I rightfully deserved. Hey, nice. We finally did it.